from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE, I'm Lisa Martin with David Floyer, and Dave and I are here, day three, David, of our VMworld 2018 coverage, if you can believe it. We're excited to welcome to theCUBE for the first time a couple of gentlemen from Micron. We have Eric Coward, Business Development Manager, and Greg Kincaid, Ecosystem Enablement Program Manager. Welcome, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. So day three, you still have voices. That's impressive. Your yes. feet are doing okay? Yeah. yeah. Pretty good, pretty good. Good. So Greg, tell us a little bit about your role and specifically what some of the new exciting announcements from Micron with respect to Flash. So my role is to find uh, deployments where SSDs can improve the performance significantly. Also, uh, any, any case where you can have uh, simplic simplicity for the uh, system administrator. So uh, with the new version of uh, VMware 6.7, we've got, uh, we've implemented uh, using NVMe as our cache layer and set as our uh, capacity layer to get uh, tremendous performance uh, across the, the spectrum of reads and writes. So uh, can you give us uh, some, some examples of how, how good that performance is? What, what sort of impact have you had? So um, take for instance, using NVMe as the cache layer and, and a, a SATA and a capacity layer, you, you can get uh, small block random reads of 500,000 for a four node cluster. That's very impressive, yeah. yeah. So can, can you make uh, some savings in terms of uh, the, uh, the, the improvements in the VM density and things like that that you can Absolutely. achieve? Absolutely, so uh, almost all of these, uh, well all of the SSDs are in a two and a half uh, uh, form factor and so you can get much better density per U with uh, those kinds of uh, SSDs as opposed to a hard drive where you have to go to a three inch to get that kind of density. So performance density, tons of data, what are some of the things, in your opinion, Greg, that differentiate Micron's solution here versus all those other guys out there? Well, we, we don't just uh, put together a solution. We actually do considerable amount of testing, both in from benchmarking. Uh, we also do uh, quite a bit of application uh, testing as well. And we, we, we publish a, a very thorough um, uh, reference architecture that's available on our website to uh, act as a pragmatic uh, blueprint for those who want to implement uh, those kinds of solutions. Excellent, excellent. So Eric, uh, you're a part of the NVDIM uh, yes. brigade. Tell us, what is, what is NVDIM? Why is it important? Well, NVDIM is very exciting. It's uh, basically memory that doesn't forget. So it's uh, on the memory bus. Uh, it's comprised of DRAM, a controller, um, and NAND. And when the power is catastrophically lost, all your data is retained. So you've got up to, what is it, 32 gigabytes Actually, yes, on a we're DIM? releasing our 32 gig NVDIM in production uh, next month, which is just right around the corner. Wow, and, and, and how many DIMs can you have in a? You can have up to, uh, typically in a 24 socket system, you can have up to 22 of those can be NVDIM should you wish to. That's a lot of, lot of memory. It is a lot and it's very, very fast. Very, very fast. Okay, so tell us uh, some of the uh, changes that need to be made in order to exploit this. This is, this is different, isn't it? So can you give some examples of how you're working with uh, the ISVs, for example? Certainly, certainly. Um, from the operating system standpoint, uh, Microsoft Windows Server 2016 um, supports, uh, natively supports persistent memory. Uh, so does uh, the Linux kernel version uh, 4.2 and newer. Um, along with that, not only that, but you also have applications that are written from the ground up to support to be persistent memory aware. You have Exchange Server, you have SQL Server 2016. Um, and with those applications, they can actually um, access the persistent memory in byte mode, which is much faster than block mode, um, but you also can, uh, uh, more legacy applications can get benefit from block mode also. Well, so, sorry Dave, I was just going to say, let's dig into a customer example, because I always love to hear how are these technologies, one, being co-developed in collaboration with the end users, right? And two, how are you seeing them in the, in the field actually helping customers transform their businesses from the inside out? Well, so one example that comes to mind, uh, actually um, uh, VMware just did a study with um, Oracle licensing. Um, and they took uh, a 12 core uh, solution 
and they put the redo log onto traditional storage. And they were able to get a certain amount of performance, let's just call it 100 units of performance. Um, they did the same thing with the same workload, but they only used uh, nine cores. Uh, so that's actually a reduction in 25% cores, but because the redo log was actually put on persistent memory, which again, you're accessing um, that storage at DRAM-like DRAM speeds, it kept the CPU much, much more busy, much more active, and they actually saw about a 2% increase in performance. But because the licensing costs are tied to your core count, actually you could potentially save on licensing costs, even though you purchased an NVDM to have faster persistent storage. What about other benefits like to a data center in terms of energy efficiency? One of the things that Pat Gelsinger said on Monday was that VMware in their uh, green charter, if you will, has saved 540 million, I think, tons of CO2 emissions. I'm, when I'm hearing, Eric, what you're saying, are customers seeing pretty significant like power savings and that roll, like, roll into cost savings with the performance and the speed that you're able to deliver? Yes, um, if you look at it, one of the other use cases for the uh, NVDIM persistent memory is that um, they used to use uh, NAND storage uh, to write these logs, but because of the endurance, um, uh, it ends up that the, uh, they would have to replace the SSDs on a three month cadence. Um, because of the NVDIM, the endurance that has just natively comes with, with DRAM, um, they were able to replace the SSDs with the NVDIM and then continue to use that for um, many, many quarters. So big cost savings. Definitely. So can I uh, uh, go back to the uh, what we were talking about before in terms of implementation of this? Yes. So what's necessary, uh, you need the software, the ISV yeah. software, you obviously need the Micron and the uh, DIM. That is correct. Anything else that you need? Uh, yeah. Yes, the actual, the hardware that you have to have, um, you have to have not necessarily a specific CPU, um, but if you have to have the BIOS that basically goes in and is aware of NVDIM. Right. Um, and one of the reasons why is when a system boots up that supports NVDIM, it goes out and looks and sees, is there um, a valid image set to true? If so, it will load that image from the NAND through the controller into the DRAM. Then when it's completed, it will go on to booting up the OS. The OS is no, none the wiser that that data wasn't sitting in DRAM the entire time. But as you can see, if your, if your BIOS support isn't there from the start with, that, that process would never happen. But we, you can have that BIOS is available on most systems? Uh, on on most multi system. multiple OEM systems, yes, that Great. is supported. So the, the, there's no requirement for anything special with, other, other, uh, than that, other, other than that, that that's, yes. that's, uh, that's amazing. So you've got a pretty, uh, are you going through other ISVs as well? Are you? Uh, Yes, there are multiple ISVs that we're working with to uh, enable the, the, the basically the, the performance benefit um, and the endurance and the low latency of NVDIMPs. And people like SAP, for example? Yes. Perfect. Okay, that's very exciting, very, very exciting indeed. Yes. Are, are you doing the same thing with your uh, Yes, we, we, we actually work with many partners. Uh, uh, we work with uh, not just VMware, but all of the uh, enterprise partners. Uh, we do case studies and we, uh, we, we do cost analysis as well. So, for instance, we, we, we found that if you statistically, strategically add an SSD to a, a, a 200 node cluster for a Hadoop, you can get the same performance there that if you had added 80 additional nodes for the entire cluster. So that's quite a bit of a savings of 80 nodes versus an additional 200 uh, NVMe uh, SSDs. Yeah, that's What's great. some of the feedback on, on these new um, advancements that you're hearing from some of the people that are coming by to visit the Micron booth here at VMworld? Well, I think people are a little surprised that uh, we are so focused on systems and making sure that they work and perform it with SSDs. Yeah, I think good. people, uh, sometimes they, they think of Micron in the early days when we were just simply a commodities broker with, with DRAM, but we're much, much more than that. So customers are, are reacting to what sounds like an evolution of Micron. Absolutely, absolutely. Eric, what are some of your... And, and to be honest, my favorite is when people come by and they look at the numbers and they're just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, uh, the performance is really outstanding when you look at an NVDIM. And, and it's just, it's simply because it is DRAM acting as a storage device. It's sitting on the memory bus, it's sitting on the memory channel, right next to the CPU. The latency is absolutely fantastic. There are certain workloads that are really 
really gain a lot of benefit by low latency for quality of service. Um, then you have just the, the, the raw bandwidth. And this is only with two NVDIMs in this particular demo system. We could have gone, excuse me, we could have gone up to six in a, in a CPU. So we could have tripled our performance just with one CPU on one node. So it's, it's pretty exciting when, when the people that are coming in the booth, they get excited too. It makes, it makes the show really fun. And I think people Excellent. also don't understand that there's more than one kind of SSD. You know, we just announced a QLC uh, NAND-based uh, SSD that uh, for, for write once, read many, uh, could actually supplant many of the hard drives that are used in, in secondary uh, storage or archives. So it also must be kind of fun to educate people on, hey, guess what, there's not just different flavors, but look what, well, look yeah. what Micron is doing, right. evolving our technologies and enabling them to you know, learn about things that they didn't know about. I imagine I'm, that must also I'm, be a I'm pretty I'm working cool with the software de developers as well, so closely, so right. this yes, is exciting. I mean, yeah. The applications are, are just innumerable. I mean, we're, we're working with uh, artificial intelligence, we're, do, we're working on uh, machine learning, applications are uh, other than just the standard uh, database that most people think of, of accelerating with SSDs. Excellent. And, and to be honest, I, I'm very passionate about technology. Just, <laughs> I, I love to geek out, if you will. I can tell. And, and I love seeing the light bulbs come on yeah. and people that I'm talking about. It just, it's, it's just very rewarding. So we're, so we're got more than halfway through 2018. Scary, September 1st is Saturday. <laughs> so going towards the end of the, of the calendar year, this excitement that I'm getting from both of you. What are you excited about Micron you know, going into um, early part of 2019 being able to, to surprise and delight your customers with? Okay. Well, we're, we're going to continue to, uh, to do all of the uh, uh, performance testings that we've done. We're going to, uh, as, we, as we bring uh, new SSDs to, to the market, we're going to continue uh, to add uh, tuning advice and, and, and detailed uh, uh, deployment instructions for our, our customers. We're going to continue to partner with the, the major players to make sure that our SSDs are performance in their applications. And I, and I think with the fact that we're releasing our 32 gig NVDIM actually in September, um, the ecosystem as it solidifies, it becomes more robust. There's just going to be use cases that, that our engineers and our team haven't thought of yet. Right. Yes. And so it's going to be yeah. really exciting to see what yeah. new use cases are out there for uh, super very fast uh, um, NVDIMs. Well guys, thanks Excellent. so much for stopping by and talking with David and me thanks about the evolution of Micron and the excitement that you get from from hearing that validation in the field. And right. we look forward to hearing what's coming out shortly, so we'll have to have you back on. Sounds great, thanks We'd Lisa, thanks Excellent. David. Excellent, Greg, Eric, thanks for your time. For David Flory, my co-host, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from VMworld 2018. Stick around, we'll be right back with our next guest.